Hi, Year 10. Um, I thought the best thing to do for feedback this week was just to go through um, how I would go about analysing a poem as an example for you, because I know that going into Year 10, this is the first time that you're um, being introduced to these GCSE poems, um, so I'm just going to go through those steps with you. Um, the first thing I'd like you to always do when you get a poem, a new poem in front of you, is to try and make some predictions based on the title. So this title is Cozy Apologia. Now, I'm not expecting any of you to know what that word means because it's not a word that you're going to have used a lot, but it's a kind of formal agreement about something, okay? So automatically, there's a kind of contrast, isn't there, between those two words because a formal agreement about like a contract almost about something you wouldn't necessarily think as being cosy so I'm interested in the title already because of what I see as being a contrast the word cosy uh, which makes me think of kind of love and affection and then apologia which makes me think really of something to do with almost business and it's a much harder word really to me and then what's interesting as well is that it says at the top that this poem is for Fred, okay? So some of the things that you might think about that are maybe um, the speaker of the poem is actually talking to this, this person, Fred. Um, and you might think, what is the relationship going to be? How can you have a cosy kind of formal agreement? Um, and I'm starting to think maybe that that's because it is to do with two people who are somehow... Um, related so maybe they're in a relationship we're not quite sure yet so we need to read on um, to see uh, what that relationship might be okay so we always predict first and we always try to think whether the title or anything else um, makes us think of something that we already know about uh, let's start with the first line then I could pick anything and think of you this lamp, the wind still rain, the glossy blue, my pen exudes, drying mat upon the page. Okay, automatically, this uh, makes me think the speaker of the poem, I, is addressing you. Now, because we know that this poem is for Fred, I think we can assume that the you here is going to be Fred, okay? Um... The idea that you would pick anything and think of a specific person already makes me think that maybe this is a kind of romantic relationship. The idea that everything around the speaker of the poem makes them think of Fred, whether it's a lamp, whether it's the, the ink of um, her pen, um, everything around this room that she might be looking at makes her think of Fred and to me that's giving me some suggestion that maybe this is about love. Um, she goes on to say I could choose any hero, any cause or age and sure as shooting arrows to the heart, astride a dappled mare, legs braced as far apart as standing in silver stirrups will allow, there you'll be with furrowed brow and chain mail glinting to set me free. One eye smiling, the other firm upon the enemy. Now, there's a lot to unpack here, and it's a really, really long sentence. So you've got lots of lines that are continuing on to the next one. Um, and, you know, creating this kind of feeling of um, never-ending love, really. The fact that these lines don't, um, the sentences don't finish at the end of the line. They go all the way down to here until we get a full stop and I think what the speaker is trying to say is that Fred who she's addressing is like a hero to her she could she could pick any hero and she knows that like a hero like a kind of knight in shining armor a chainmail glinting um he'll come and he will set her free Okay, so maybe on the one hand you might think, well, that's quite a stereotypical view of love that this speaker of the poem is talking about, you know, you know, having a hero. Actually, maybe you think, you know, do modern women need to be saved by heroes? Can't they save themselves? On the other hand, you might think this is very beautiful, romantic imagery between 
um, the speaker of this poem and this person, Fred. And it seems, doesn't it, you know, these kind of romantic images of shooting arrows to the heart um, is perhaps telling us that this is a romantic relationship. But then you'll notice that there's kind of a shift here because in the next stanza, it starts by saying, this post-postmodern age is all business, compact discs and faxes, a do it now and take no risks event. And so there's a real break there, isn't there, between this kind of idealistic first stanza, this very romantic stanza, to now saying that this is an age of business, okay? And the connotations of that word business, when I think of that, I think of, you know, formality and, you know, things that you don't necessarily want to do, you know, following a schedule, doing everything kind of organized, nothing spontaneous. And perhaps that doesn't necessarily paint the most romantic picture of love. But maybe we can understand what the speaker's trying to say because she goes on to say, today a hurricane is nudging up the coast. Oddly male, big bad Floyd. Um, And that's just referring to the fact that when you have a hurricane or a tornado or a storm or something, they get called by names, okay? Um, Who brings a host of daydreams. So this hurricane is coming and, and the speaker's starting to have daydreams and she's thinking of awkward reminiscences, so awkward memories of teenage crushes on worthless boys whose only talent was to kiss you senseless. They all had sissy names, Marcel, Percy, Dewey, were thin as licorice and as chewy, sweet with a dark and hollow centre. So what I what I'm thinking here is why if you were, you know, worrying about a hurricane approaching, and let's imagine you're kind of stuck inside and you, you can see the news and it's coming, why do you think that that would prompt you to start thinking about the past? What is it about the situation that the speaker's in with this hurricane that's making her think about teenage crushes? Why why think back to that? And I think maybe one of the answers to that question is that it's making her think about her current relationship and it's making her think about how much she values, perhaps, the love that she now has. Um, be interesting if any of you have got any other ideas in your writing after I've talked through this. Um, she goes on to say in the final stanza, Floyd's cussing up a storm. You're bunkered in your eerie. That's... um an eagle's nest, okay, so she's talking about Fred, I guess, um, saying that I'm perched in mine, two twin desks, computers, hardwood floors, she's referring to their two separate kind of study areas in the house, and she goes on to say, we're content, but fall short of the divine. Now, this is really interesting, because maybe when we think of kind of this all-consuming love, We want passion and maybe this contentedness, you might think, is this really romantic? Um, But perhaps the speaker of this poem is saying exactly this, you know, something divine is something to do with God. And maybe she's saying that actually that's almost too much to, to, to pin on a relationship and the more normal everyday part of a relationship is important. And she goes on to say, still, it's embarrassing, this happiness. Who's satisfied simply with what's good for us? When has the ordinary ever been news? And yet, because nothing else will do to keep me from melancholy, call it blues, I fill this stolen time with you. And so that question here is really important, isn't it? You know, she says it's embarrassing to be so content and in love when, you know, it's just normal life. Um... Because, you know, the ordinary is never news, is it? You only ever hear about dramatic kind of maybe divorces or extreme relationships in the news. But actually what the speaker of this poem is saying is that this ordinary love, they're perfectly happy with, they're very content. And actually in a time of crisis, this hurricane, she wants to fill this stolen time with you. So this this pause that she's having while this hurricane is raging, she wants to fill that time with her partner, Fred. Now, I've gone through what I think the poem is about. This is not by any stretch of the imagination the only way that you can read this poem. I've tried to talk through it quite quickly because I don't want this video to be too long. But what I really want you to do is go back to your notes and add to them. And then I want you to 
add a little bit of writing about this poem, okay? If you've got any questions, please leave me a comment. Take care.